Hello everybody, this is Jeremiah Wong from Frontier Precision Unmanned, and today we're going to shoot a little video about generating a mission plan for the DJI L1 with the M300 uh, utilizing Pilot 2. So let's get started. Uh, so the first thing we do, we turn on a smart controller, and then we come to this screen right here. We're going to hit the Pilot 2 button. That brings open Pilot. Next we're going to do is we're going to hit Flight Route, and then we're going to hit Create Route, and then we're going to choose Mapping. So now we are in the map area, and now we're going to go through and generate our mission plan. So the first thing I'll do is I'll draw a boundary around the area that I want to map. So I'm just going to click on the map, uh, make a little more room, and let's start drawing our boundary. So let's map this area right here, let's say. So then we want to add another point. We just hit the little plus button. And it adds another point in there that we can add. Let's just get this entire way. Alright, so let's say this is the boundary of what we want to fly. So next thing I'm going to do is we can name this mission right here. So I'll name this L1. I'm going to select my camera. I'm going to use the Zenmuse L1. I'm going to do LiDAR mapping. Um, once I do LiDAR mapping, a bunch of the information here um, starts to populate. And then you can see right here the mission populates too. Um, so we have the lines and then we have the overlap. So the green lines is the data that's going to be kept. And then the yellow, yellowish, orangish line, um, that is data that is not going to be kept. Um, that is also the place where it's going to do its calibration move too. So let's go through the settings now. So right now, at the current settings we have, we're going to be having a a point cloud density is 141 points per square meter with a image density because the L1 does have a camera, an RGB camera too. It will have a 2.73 centimeter um, per pixel GSD in the images. Um, the next setting that you see is going to be the IMU calibration. This is for calibrating the IMU. Um, if you hit the little exclamation point right there, I'll give you a little synopsis of what's going on. But for the most part, with LiDAR payloads, you have to kind of wake up the IMU. If it goes on a too long of a stretch, or um, the IMU tends to get lazy and kind of falls asleep. So you kind of have to go through and do some um, calibration moves to wake the IMU up, or else the data will end up starting to drift, or the IMU starts to drift, which leads to um, degraded data quality. Um, so in general, I'll always leave the IMU calibration on so I don't have to do it manually. Um, DJI Pilot will do it automatically for you. The next thing right here is terrain follow, and this is an actually a pretty cool feature that just came out not too long ago. Um, but it's the ability to download a DSM off the internet. So let me go back. So what we'll do to do that is we have to make sure the smart controller is connected to a data data connection. We'll turn on and flip the switch for train follow. We'll select the DSM and we'll hit the plus and we'll go download from internet. So right now what it's going to do is it's going to pull it's going to pull the terrain map, the DSM, off the internet um, and put that in the back. So now you can see that the terrain map has been loaded and then you can see the elevations that will fly. So now um, it has terrain falling with it, which is a great, great little feature because it used to be kind of a pain in the past to do terrain following. Um, in general, we kind of just told people to use UGCS, but with this feature, it makes it a lot easier um, to maintain a consistent LiDAR data set um, over the ground in more challenging conditions. Um, so the next thing right here is terrain follow height. So this is the height above the ground that you would like to fly. So for us, 
I mean, there's really not too many obstructions up in the air, but I would rather fly a little bit lower. So let's fly it about, uh, Two hundred and fifty feet. So now it's going to train follow at two hundred and fifty feet. Uh, one thing I wish. Let me turn off terrain following for a second. Um, I turn off terrain following for just a sec because you can also see that at some points in the middle, especially right here, you see those little yellow dots. So this is another thing about the lidar sensors that you have to do, and VGI Pilot does it automatically for you. On long stretches, um, like I said, the IMU tends to drift. So DJI Pilot automatically goes through and plans, oops, automatically goes through and plans in, um, those IMU calibration steps for you. So you don't have to do them yourself or actually think about making them after, you know, a certain amount of distance, um, or a certain amount of time. So I'm going to turn terrain following back on. I'm going to reselect the DSM. And the next thing is takeoff speed. I'm just going to leave that at 22.4. And then my flight speed is going to be 20.1 miles an hour. So when it comes to flight speed and LiDAR, um, the slower you fly, the more points on the ground you're going to get. Uh, the faster you fly, the less points on the ground you're going to get. So your flight speed really gets determined by the type of terrain you'll be flying. Well, not terrain, the type of foliage that's on the ground and how much penetration you're hoping to get. Um, you want to fly slower over more heavily, densely um, foliaged areas uh, in order to get more points on the ground. Um, if it's a big, wide open area with not much foliage or, or not many things like low grasses and things out there. Um, you want to fly a little bit faster because in the end, uh, you don't need all those points for the penetration. Um, you're just looking to get that ground, which is pretty much blatantly there. Um, so right now, if I just leave it at 20 miles an hour, we can scroll back up and I'll see my point cloud density is going to be 207 points per square meter. But if I slow it down, so let's say I want to fly at 15 miles an hour. We'll go up here and you can see the points per square meter jumps to 278 points per square meter. Um, but my mission is definitely longer. So now it's gone from the initial 50 minutes and 27 seconds. Now if I push it down to 15, well about 15, it pushes it down to about an hour and three minutes. Um, so not too much difference in the end in flight time, but you do pick up a decent amount of points in the end. So I would rather fly a slower speed and get more points on the ground, um, especially because this is a more densely foliaged area where I kind of want to get more points on the ground in order to uh, maximize the ground points that I'm getting. Um, course angle right here, this just changes the rotation of how you're going to fly the mission. Elevation optimization right here. This right here just makes it so it flies in at the end of the mission, it will fly to the middle and then it will take some photos on the way there and it will take some oblique images too in order to help with um, elevation optimization. Exactly as it says. But then you can take a look at the little informational thing right there if you want a better explanation. Um, usually I don't really check that, especially if I have LiDAR data, uh, I shouldn't have an issue with the elevations. Um, next one would be upon completion, I want it to return to home. So that's what I'll leave it as, but you have a couple other little things that you can choose if you wanted to, but in general, I'll choose return to home. And then we have our advanced settings. So in advanced settings, when it comes to LiDAR with the L1, the default is 20%. But in general with LiDAR for us and in terms of data quality and points on the ground, we like to fly with 50% overlap, which definitely increases the flight time. Um, but it also 
gives us a lot more points on the ground and a lot more density too. Um, so for us, we generally will fly at 50% overlap. Um, forward overlap doesn't mean as much. Forward overlap is more or less just for the RGB camera on there. Um, so I'm just going to leave that because in general for photogrammetry, you kind of don't want to do anything below 70 side and 70 front. So 70 front is pretty good to me. Um, and that also means the side lap is going to be 61%. Again, with the margins, you can increase the margins. This is how far outside the boundary you make. The, the unit will fly and collect data. Um, for me, I don't really care to collect more than that because let's say my boundary lines already overextend the area a little bit of what I want to fly. Um, and then you have time to interval shot for the photo mode. So when it's going to take the photos, it's going to take it every certain amount of seconds. So usually about one or two seconds. Now in the payload settings, what I generally do is I'll always go through and choose dual return. Um, I know there's a triple return, but when it comes to the Livebox Avia and for what I'm hearing is um, the data that you get from the third return isn't really as good. And one of the reasonings I was told um, and if you guys know, you can definitely comment, is dual return or triple returns, because the laser isn't the strongest, that third return doesn't really, isn't really as strong um, and doesn't provide as good, good data as just two returns. Um, but that's one of the explanations I have. But if you know more about that, um, definitely comment about that. Sampling rate, I will sample at two, 240 kilohertz. And then my scanning mode, I generally like to do the non-repetitive scanning mode. And then I'll just leave RGB coloring on too. Um, so those are pretty much all my settings that I would use to fly this mission right here. And after I'm done, what I'll do is I'll hit the save button. And now it saves the flight mission. And if I was out at the site right now, I had the drone on and ready to go. I would just hit the play button on the middle left right here and start the mission and fly it. Um, and that is a video on how to generate and get generate a mission for the L1 payload from DJI. In addition to that really cool new um terrain follow feature, DSM downloading feature that it has too. Uh, hopefully this helps you out and I'll talk to you guys later.